The sun whose rays are all ablaze with ever-living glory. Not deny his majesty, he scorns to tell a story. He don't exclaim, I blush for shame, so kindly be indulgent. But fierce and bold, in fiery gold, his glory's all effulgent. I mean to rule the earth, as he the sky. We really know our worth, the sun and I. Brick is written and directed by Ryan Johnson and it stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt. So Brick is a film that I'm reviewing because it's a $50 patron request from one of my best friends, Perry. Uh, most of y'all probably have seen Perry. He was most recently in my Tenant review and he's in a bunch of my car reviews that I did last year. So if you want to check all that stuff out, go ahead. But um, he's a really good friend of mine and he's been a $50 patron ever since I created a Patreon so um, I appreciate him so much for that. He requested for me to watch and review Brick, which I was kind of excited for because I really haven't seen a lot of Ryan Johnson stuff, but I have seen Knives Out and I really, really enjoyed Knives Out. I think that's a pretty awesome movie. And, you know, obviously The Last Jedi is a huge controversial type of thing. Um, you know, I didn't hate that movie, I, but that's just because I'm not like a huge Star Wars fan. I just kind of went into that with face value, and you know, I came out thinking it wasn't that terrible. Definitely don't think it's great or even love it. But, you know, the fact that I enjoyed Knives Out so much, I was like, well, if I can get something that is this well written and this well directed, and something that is at least as entertaining as Knives Out, then I'm in for something that's a real treat and something that I'm really going to enjoy. So coming out of Brick... I just, I, I couldn't get into this movie. I, I didn't like it. I, I didn't enjoy it. And I'm not sure how many people out there are actually really love this film. I didn't really look up, um, you know, any of the reviews. I didn't look up, uh, any of the letterbox reviews from my friends. So I really don't know how many people genuinely enjoy this film and really, really like it. So, um, with that being said, this is a film that I really wanted to get into and really wanted to like, but I just couldn't. And there's plenty of reasons of why that is, and it's really connected to this just one giant issue that I have. Before I really get into that, let me discuss a few positives that I do have with this film, because I don't think it's just like completely atrocious or completely terrible. When it comes to the aesthetic quality of this film, in terms of how it's shot, um, in terms of the use of sound and the use of score in the film, and just in terms of the composition and the way that the film was put together, I think it is pretty solid. Um, honestly, I think the camera work might be my favorite thing about it, because there are some really pretty shots in this film that are just framed beautifully. So, when it comes to the aesthetic quality, I think it's great. And like I said, I like the use of the musical score and the stylistic nature of it, because... This is a film that Perry told me before going into it that it's like a, it's it's Ryan Johnson paying homage to the kind of crime noir genre, and he's fusing it with like a high school drama mystery type film. So with that premise alone, I was like, oh, that sounds something that is really interesting. And obviously it didn't work for me, but I do like the idea of it. I think the concept in and of itself is an interesting creative concept. And so I'll, just, I'll give it at least praise there because I do think the concept is interesting. And the musical score is one way that I actually did enjoy the way Ryan Johnson incorporated that kind of crime noir genre style into this film because there's a lot of uses of saxophone. Um, I especially liked it when it was used in a more erratic and chaotic way during the more intense scenes. I thought that was pretty effective, and I did enjoy most of the visual aspects of this film. There's not much visual aspects of this film, but the ones that are there, I actually really dug. I wish there was a whole lot more of that, but when it was actually there, I could get behind it. And I thought it was a creative use of editing and visual storytelling. And the fact that this is a really low budget film, I think this was made on the budget of like close to 500 grand. Um, I think that's pretty impressive just on its own even though I really didn't enjoy this film, because um, just what this film was able to accomplish and 
how many people it was able to appeal to and become pretty successful um, is impressive without a doubt, even if I didn't like it. So the fact that this was made on a low budget and the fact that Ryan Johnson was able to accomplish something like this um, with a low, with a budget of $500,000 is pretty awesome regardless. But obviously, I still didn't enjoy this film very much. And honestly, it's mostly just a big writing issue. And I mean, don't get me wrong, there's definitely issues that I have with the direction. But I think the core of what's wrong with this film, in my opinion, is how Ryan Johnson decided to write it. Because the first, like, few minutes of this film, honestly, like, I was hooked. I was like, wow, this looks like it's going to be a really interesting and dark mystery type film. And, you know, it's because a lot of it was conveyed through its visual storytelling and the editing. And I was like, okay, this looks pretty decent. And then characters start interacting with each other and talking to each other. And I was like, oh boy, if the whole film was like this, I don't think I'm going to be on board with it. And the whole film was like that, so I couldn't get on board with it. And basically, the way that Ryan Johnson decided to write this film is that he thought it was a good idea to basically have all of these high schoolers act and talk like they're in a crime noir type film, which means that they talk in this incredibly articulate and clever way. Every second somebody has this really quippy thing to say or has this incredibly clever piece of dialogue that's locked and loaded. If you haven't got a finger in M's troubles, then why did her name get me into your rather exclusive party? And it just came off incredibly unbelievable. And that was one of the main issues with this film was that it lacked any kind of plausibility. Like there was no way I could buy or believe anything that was happening in this film. And I'm not looking for realism. Um, there's certain directors that have styles to them that aren't necessarily realistic, but um, I can get on board with because there is some sort of believability and plausibility to it. But this one just completely lacks that. And a lot of it has to do with the way that these high schoolers are talking to each other because high schoolers don't talk like that. There is absolutely no way that these people are actually articulating their thoughts in this kind of way. And there's no way that these people are actually acting like this. And it just really took me out of the film because it comes off really artificial, um, really phony. And there's no character in this film that feels genuine or authentic. And it just feels like everybody is just embracing some phony persona and it's just acting, which was a huge bummer because every second that something is happening, I'm like, oh, they're just acting a part. And I get why Ryan Johnson is doing it. Like, I get it. He's paying a homage to the whole crime noir genre, but it just doesn't translate well when you keep the exact same kind of stylistic dialogue and just make a bunch of high school characters spew it out and act out these personas because it's just not believable. Like there is no way that people actually act like that in high school. I think this film could have benefited from having a lot more self-awareness and having a lot more comedy because this film takes itself incredibly seriously. And that's a huge issue because again, it lacks any kind of believability and it takes itself extremely seriously, which is just a horrible combination to have. There was one scene that I actually loved and I was waiting to happen and I was glad to see it happen. And it's a scene where somebody's mom comes into the mix and the mom kind of like gives the film a more realistic depiction of what's happening. And I enjoyed that scene because again, it felt actually believable, but it's just one scene and you know, it kind of, it kind of glosses over that as just kind of like a funny joke. And then the film keeps going on with how serious it is and how it expects the audience to just really buy and take everything in a really serious way. But I feel like if the film had more moments like that and had more comedy throughout the film, um, I would have enjoyed it more. One thing that also kind of bothered me but might be a little nitpicky is that that one scene I talked about with the mom is like the only scene where parents are involved. I mean, you get one scene with the principal, but even that scene felt really artificial and forced and just lacked any kind of believability to it. And also all these kids are in high school and it seemed like being in class was never an obstacle. It seems like that 
Uh, parents were never an obstacle either, and all these kids are just doing whatever the hell they want all the time. And it didn't like spend any time with the actual high school culture except for except for some of the extracurricular stuff but it just seemed like everybody has all the time in the world and nobody to stop them from doing anything and I guess that's a little nitpicky but that's something that bothered me when I was watching it I was kind of hoping that like at the end of the film like Joseph Gordon Levitt's character like wakes up from a daydream in class or something like that and uh it like looks down at his own screenplay that he's writing or something and he was just like fantasizing about his his movie like his own screenplay or something because that would have actually made sense and even though i still would have probably not enjoyed the movie very much at least i could be like oh well see that that makes total sense now i get what the film was going for the mystery in this film seems like something that was actually engaging and interesting something that had a lot of potential but I just didn't care about the outcome of any of this stuff because I just kept getting reminded that none of these characters are real and all of this is just phony. And um, it w it's just a shame because I feel like this film actually did have quite a bit of potential, but it just completely dropped the ball because it decided to not have any kind of believability to it. This really seemed like a film that a lot of high school kids and first year college students like dream of making but they don't have like the actual budget to make it happen so they always pump out like you know crappier watered down versions of this but ryan johnson ended up getting enough money to make it happen and this is what we got and i guess this is the best version of something like that but it's just it's not my cup of tea it just doesn't work for me at all and even though the aesthetics are well produced and some of the score stylistically works throughout some parts. Um, it just wasn't enough for me to actually enjoy this film. This was actually kind of tough to sit through. So I'm going to give Brick a 4 out of 10. Yeah, I, I really didn't like this movie. Um, I'm sorry, Perry. I, it's cool that you like it. I'm not judging you, but it's just this was not for me. Um, this was really unkino, in my opinion. Anyway, what are you guys' thoughts on Brick? Because I really have no idea what people think about this film. If you enjoyed what I had to say about Brick, please give this video a thumbs up and share it amongst your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be updated on more film-related content. Uh -huh.